Hey guys, I'm Phil Enough from Australia, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Alright, so, another live stream to show you a bit of the insides into how I am practicing for my live concert next week. Give me a thumbs up, a little comment in the, uh, in the comment section if you can hear me fine. Obviously, I'm just wanting to test out some of the gear as well that we're going to be using next week too. So, give me a thumbs up, let me know if you can hear me fine through my microphone. Alright. Also, I want to know where you guys are from. So let me know where you're from in the world. It's interesting to hear your stories and where people are from. So I really like to know where more about the audience, really. So um, as I touched on um, a couple of days ago, awesome, Ace, good to see you again. So a couple of days ago, I was showing you guys uh, some of the insights into how I'm practicing and preparing for this concert that I'm doing next week. So if you want to check that one out, the, uh, the thumbnail that I used at the start of this video, that's advertising the time um, and when it is going to be. So make sure you come and check that out. There's some awesome music for there, including a brand new piece of music. So that no one's seen before. It only got finished about a week ago. Um, so I'm really excited by that one. So I'll give you a bit of a preview on that after this. But a uh, couple of days ago, I talked about how I was working on the Variation 2 out of the Grand Russian Fantasia. And that one's the fast valve section. So that one's not a bad video if you want to go check that out. Today, I'm going to show you how I've been working on the triple tonguing section. Now, if anyone doesn't know Grand Russian Fantasia, it's like a whole page of triple tonguing. And I was practicing it today, and as I was getting towards the end of my practice session, I was thinking, you know what, this is probably really interesting for people. Um, so I thought I'd go live and just show you guys how I've been practicing it and how I've been uh, pacing myself to get through this triple tonguing section. So I'm just going to play it. Let's see how I go. Um, as I said, it's the end of my session. So I'm a little bit tired, but here we go. Let, have a listen. This is the triple tonguing section. terrible all right cool so you can hear it it's it's fast it's long it goes for a long time and as you can hear I'm a little bit tired in the tongue right now so I just want to show you guys how I practice through this now the first thing I want to point out here is does anyone actually know what the main tune is right right leave a comment let's see if anyone can actually pick it up I'll uh, I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes before I um, spoil it for you but it's a pretty common theme um, theme song that you would know if you're from that part of the world. All right, so the first step is to learn the bass notes, right? So there's not a great deal of notes here. So I'm going to play through just the notes. I'm going to slur through. I'm not going to double tongue, uh, triple tongue. I'm just going to slur through the notes as written because I want to hear the notes by themselves and I want to hear the phrase. Hey, Anthony from Houston. Good to have you here. No, so does anyone actually know that main tune? Now, so that's the first step, is I want to be able to hear what the actual notes of the phrase are. So that's why I play that through like that. Now, the next step I want to do is I want to make sure that the air is flowing 
nicely through the instrument and I'm actually centering the horn. So I want to play it with the best sound um, and get just the simple melody part sorted out first. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to play that through um, going to play that through on my instrument again, but this time I'll tongue each beat sort of thing and then I'm going to aim for the best sound and the best pitch. All right, I'll just do that first. All right, this is my cornet. Um, so I'm playing this on my cornet. This is my Stomvi Titan cornet. Um, I have played this on trumpet as well, but uh, because um, essentially the theme and variation solo. So if you don't know Grand Russian Fantasia, it is a theme and variation solo. And Jean-Baptiste Arben was the man who made the theme and variation solo very, very popular. And as we all know, if you're a trumpet player, he is a cornet player. So, and he, and he predominantly done everything on the cornet. So the traditionalist in me is kind of using the cornet for that cornet sound to kind of pay a little bit of homage to uh, Jean-Baptiste Arben. So that's why I play these on the cornet. So, back to the task. So, now I'm going to play through and I'm going to play the actual tune. I'm going to tongue the crotchets or the quarter notes sort of thing as I would. And I'm going to focus on the sound, the pitch, and the airstream. Have a listen. So I'm just going to break it down a little bit there. Now, once I have that sounding good, now I'm pretty happy with the majority of how that went. Now what I'm going to do is, if I wasn't happy with that, then I would do a couple of things to make sure that the air is working nicely. So the first thing I would try would be to buzz it on my mouthpiece. Now, keeping in mind the goal here is the important part. The goal is to get the air flowing to support the notes, right? Because if we can't get the air supporting the phrase, then when we come to the triple tonguing of it, it's not going to work. So the first goal is to get the air flowing nicely through the instrument the way that we need to to play it simplified. So have a listen. I'm going to I'm now going to buzz it on the mouthpiece. Thanks, Raf. Good to s good to see you here. I know you're from Sydney, so you know Sydney, Australia. It's a good place in the world. All right, cool. So that's the first step that I'm going to do, right? So as I said, the goal is to get the air flowing nicely. If after mouthpiece buzzing, I'm still struggling to get the air support working as needed, I would then go on to what I call flutter tonguing, um, where I'm rolling my R's through the same passage. So I'm just highlighting this first section of this first page. So uh, uh, flutter tonguing. I'll give you a little demonstration on that. Right, now that one will use up a lot of air. So you can hear the joy with flutter tonguing is it highlights where the airstream's not working efficiently. So if the airstream isn't working efficiently, the flutter cuts out. All right, so that's what we want to make. We want to make sure that the flutter is continuous and the sound is full. That's how we know the air is working when we flutter. All right, another comment. All right, Alexander. Uh, Lawler trumpets, yeah, I have checked them out a little bit, um, but not a great deal in depth. So it's been a long time since I've seen them around, but um, I'm probably not the person to ask about the Lawler trumpets because I don't, I just, I haven't used them much, and we don't get a lot of trumpets here often in Australia, so I don't know them. So sorry, I can't really help you with that. 
So now that I've got the airflow nicely on this phrase, right? I've got the notes highlighted, I've got the phrasing working nicely, I've got the good sound, the good intonation, that kind of thing. Now it's time for me to add in the articulation. Now, a little trick that I like to use with triple tonguing, I use the, uh, the syllables to, do, ku. And I use these syllables because I find that it helps me with pulsing and I, I find it helps me, it rolls off the tongue nicely for me. So instead of like in the Arben book, he goes tu tu ku, or ter ter ker is actually how it would be pronounced sort of thing. So uh, I know a lot of people do ter ter ker. I know people who do tu tu ku. I know people who do tu ku tu. Now, me personally, I find tu du ku rolls off the tongue nicely. Now, the other thing that I want to try and think about is I want to try and bring the articulation to the wards of the front of my mouth. So my tongue, like I got the tu, du, ku, tu, du, ku, is kind of what my tongue's doing. So tu, du, ku, tu, du, ku, right? It's a little bit weird to do in my hand kind of thing. It's a little bit complicated, but those are the syllables that I use and that, that's how I get through this. Now, because there's so much triple tongue in this, the way that I want to practice it is very slowly and incredibly firmly defined notes, right? And I'm going to break it down into sections. It is going to wear the tongue out very, very quickly, especially by doing it very firmly and very slowly. So I'll give you a bit of a demonstration on that. Sorry, I think I made a couple of mistakes in that uh, with the phrasing, but you get the idea. Very slow and very firm. Then I'm going to increase my speed, and I'm just going to work on it in these small uh, passages, right? I'm going to increase my speed. I'm still going to keep it over, over the top firm with my articulation, though. But I am also thinking to do coup. And the last thing that I haven't yet mentioned, which I notice a lot of trumpet players doing, when they multiple tongue, they go too short, right? And when you go too short, you're chopping off the airstream. If you're chopping off the airstream, then you're not allowing the tongue to move up and down freely with the air, and you have to do all of the tongue, all of the work with the muscle. Um, Anthony. I play casually with some of the orchestras, um, but I'm not full-time in an orchestra. I did spend um, 15 years in military bands here in Australia. Um, I did 10 years in the Army Band, and then I did five years in the Navy Band, um, and now I'm freelancing. So it, not really a good time to be getting out and freelancing, though, <laughs> So um, with the pandemic. But, you know, things are picking up here in Australia, so I've got gigs again which is really, really cool. But in, in answer to your question, no, I am not full-time with the symphony orchestra. I do play casually um, with um, like the Australian Opera and Ballet Orchestra from time to time, and I do some other orchestras around, so a lot of chamber orchestras in Sydney as well, um, sort of thing. But it's hard to... <laughs> It's hard to perform with, w with one of the major orchestras when you have a full-time performing job. So I haven't done huge amounts of work for... Um, in fact, I haven't done any work with the Sydney Symphony for, for a number of years because I was in the military band. So um, that makes things a little bit challenging. But that's my background. So I hope that answers your question, Anthony. All right, back to the triple tongue. So longer notes is how I'm approaching this. Um, the to do ku articulation and think about the airstream moving in a forward direction the entire time we're playing.
So, as you can hear, my importance is being placed on the phrasing and keeping that air moving forwards. Now that I've got that section sounding pretty good, I'm really happy with that. That's a little bit slower than I want to be going though. So I'm going to go back over that same section and try and increase the speed. Remember that um, what's actually going to happen is you are going to wear out the tongue and it is going to fatigue. Very much like a muscle if you're at the gym, you, you work yourself to fatigue and you get tired and that's how you get stronger. So because I've been working towards this concert, which is next week, next week, uh, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday at 6 or 7 p.m., depending on where you are in the U.S., or it's going to be Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock Sydney time. So you can check that out. It's going to be live streamed on YouTube. So come and check that out. This is one of the pieces on it. Um, and so you'll notice that I'm uh, like, I, because I'm working towards that gig, sorry, because I'm working towards that gig, I am practicing my triple tonguing every single day and working my way into that complete fatigue. However, keeping that in mind, because it's only, uh, it's only a few more days away, I am going to start l uh, reducing the amount that I fatigue myself. So tomorrow I probably won't practice my triple tonguing at all so that, I can um, so that I can kind of recover with the tongue and then it'll just be what I need to to get in form for the gig so that I'm not fatigued when I get there like I am today. But let's get into that. All right, so I'm going to increase the speed a little bit. I'm just going to play a little bit more for you now and show you, demonstrate where I'm at now. You've got the the thinking of the, the airstreams working. The notes are clean and in tune. The articulation is the two do coup and clean. Now I'm going to show you how I practice it to get it up to speed and fatigue myself. So watch for a bit. And now you can hear that, like, my tongue speed has gone. It's even a little bit strong to, uh, hard to talk at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is a tongue workout, isn't it, Ace? Um, and that is essentially how I work up this final, the finale of this, um, of the Grand Russian Fantasia. Now, did anyone actually know what this piece was called? I'm not seeing, uh, sorry, what this main tune is taken from. I haven't seen any comments in the chat. So I'm just going to spell it. It is the Russian national anthem. So it's a little, yeah, a little little treat to f put in there at the very end of a piece called Grand Russian Fantasia. So it's a good little fitting sort of piece. Now that is how I work on my tonguing um, through this piece. And any time I've got a theme and variation solo, especially that's where I see the most triple tonguing. Um, when I am, uh, when I've got to perform something with lots of triple tonguing in it. I put myself very, very fatigued through this sort of uh, this sort of practice regime, um, up in, pretty much up until the gig. All right, now I promised you guys a little treat, a little treat. Now this is something that nobody has heard before. All right, it's been a work in progress. The composer himself has only just released it to me um, in the final stages this last uh, about, about a week ago. Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a little taste of uh, a 
of the, the Sonata for Trumpet by Christopher Healy. Now, if you guys don't know Chris Healy, he is a fantastic composer based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, so he's probably not as known as what a lot of other guys are. Um, but yeah, very good composer. Like, um, kind of a good balance for me between um, between modern, contemporary, and but also has like good phrasing and some beautiful music involved as well. So let me find a bit that I want to play. I might just start from the top. All right. No, I'll go for the main theme. All right, have a listen. There's a little taste uh, of what's coming next week. A little bonus for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. So, have a listen. There you have it. There's a little taste of the first movement of the Sonata for Trumpet by Christopher Healy. What do you guys think? Really looking forward to it. So the live streamed concert is going to be next week. I'll talk in Sydney time because I'm in Sydney. Um, it'll be on the 23rd of December at 11 o'clock in the morning, Sydney time. So if you're one of my friends in the United States or pretty much the rest of the world, you guys are all behind the times, as I like to say. Thanks, Ace. It's a good piece. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so, it's going to be Tuesday evening for most of you guys out there. Yes, that was on my C trumpet. Um, if you guys don't know, or you guys are new to me, this is my... I, I play Stomvi instruments. I really love the Stomvi instruments. Um, and this was actually my first purchased Stomvi trumpet. It was the This is the C trumpet, the Stomvi Titan C trumpet. And I really like it. And this little thing, this little doodad here, is called a maxi clapper. Um, I've done a little review on the maxi clapper in my four valve trumpet review, which is also on my channel as well. All right. All right, I'm just going to read this out from Alexander because this seems really interesting. I think you guys might be interested in it as, as well. Um, so, Alexander has friends from Russia, Israel, and Great Britain who launched a project called Shards of Sound, a project that is dedicated to the best trumpeters in the world. Yeah. A series of different interviews, including discussions of trumpeters and various composers. Yeah, some really cool stuff. Um asking me to be involved that'd be really cool yeah send me an email look i'd love to be involved if they're you know I, i'm more than happy to go and 
do some stuff. I don't necessarily feel like I'm one of the best in the world, but, you know, it's uh, very humbling to be asked. So thanks very much. Yeah, send me an email. Um, yeah, we can sort something out. That'd be really awesome. So that is what is coming next week. I really hope you guys can come and stick around and co come and watch it next week. Um, if you know anyone who might be interested, share share it with them. There's already I've already got the live stream link on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my channel and go through the content sort of page, there is a link. I'll put a link in the description after after I share this video as well. It would be great to have as many people come and watch this performance as well. I've got a good friend of mine, Gareth Lewis, who plays fantastic trombone. He is full-time with the, uh, the band of the New South Wales Police Force, I believe is their technical um, name. Um, and... Yeah, so he's a very, very good trom trombone player. So if you've got any trombone friends, get them to check it out as well. We're going to be doing some, some brand new compositions, uh, like y the one you just gave a little snippet to, the Christopher Healy Sonata for Trumpet. We've got some Brendan Collins stuff as well, another fantastic Australian composer who's, um, who's done some really cool things in the world stage with his music. So it's really fantastic and a, a great honour to be playing, um, playing one of his works as well. Excuse me. And we've got the Grand Russian Fantasia, got some Grand Dal, um, and some Sansons, uh, Cavatino on the trombone, um, and some, some Rossini to finish it off. So it's going to be a really good program. I look forward to seeing you guys then next week. All right. So, as always, I hope I've helped you out with some triple tonguing advice. And to give you a bit of an insight into how I'm preparing for, um, for next week's concert. So I really look forward to seeing you guys there. And in the meantime... I'm Phil O'Neill from Australia, and happy practicing. <laughs>